How long are you going to wish that you had a better life? How long are you going to sit back and go on social media and scroll and scroll and scroll and look at other people's success and wish that was you? How long are you going to stay in a job that you dislike or absolutely hate because you are too scared to make a move? Because you are too scared to make a move because you are terrified of effing up. You are terrified of making mistakes. Now, a lot of us fall into the trap of either thinking that things are going to come easy or that we are going to follow some fake guru on YouTube or on, on uh, TikTok or Instagram and that person is going to take us to the golden, uh, to that golden place, to that promised land. But it's not going to happen like that. It never ever happens like that. You have to take the initiative yourself. You have to first and foremost put the social media away, put it away and then start focusing and I mean really focusing on your own growth in the direction that you want. Now, I'm not saying everybody's direction is to get into business. If business is what you want, then good, go for it. If there is a specific career that you want, then good, go for it. Find out how you can get into it. Be ready to put in the work. Be ready to put in the effort. Be ready to, to do whatever it takes. But please, for God's sake, do not sit and fall into that comfort zone of doom scrolling one video after the other after the other where people are telling you hey look at my life hey look at what i did look at the car i bought look at the holiday i'm gone for look at the home i live in look at my 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 partner how beautiful they are now that is that is what i call copium it's because you are too afraid of taking the step yourself it's because you are too afraid of messing up, effing up, and that is why you are not taking that step and you are depriving yourself of that. And all you do is you look at these guys succeeding and you say, hmm, I can do that. Can. But do you? No, you don't. Because you just keep telling yourself, when I want to, I will start. And the only thing, the only reason I didn't start is because I'm not ready yet. You know, I'm just going to do a little more learning, a few more hours on this, on the social media. And I'm going to listen to these people who are giving such great advice. Let me tell you something. Most of these people are fakes. They are getting what they, what they are telling you from the internet or from, from AI, from ChatGPT. And all they are doing is, in a very convincing way, they are regurgitating whatever they are learning or whatever the, the AI is preparing for them to you. But I must admire them for one thing. At least they've taken the step. At least they have taken the effort of going and doing all that. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to get started. But that's the, the, the key, right? Get started. Now, Recently, I was at a supermarket and it was one of those places where you go and you buy filtered water in bulk. So you take your empty bottles and you, and you pour it into, into, uh, from their tank into your bottle. And in the course of that, I ended up spilling about one and a half liters of water all over the floor. <laughs> now, one and a half liters of water in a bottle is not a lot, but one and a half liters of water on the floor is a lot so the whole aisle was was wet fortunately there was no one around to see that and so I decided to quietly take my bottles and skedaddle out of there so that nobody can see me but two steps out of that aisle and I felt bad what if somebody walks there and falls and so I went up to uh, uh, one of the staff at the supermarket and I said uh, hey you know in that aisle there somebody spilled water and I thought, well, that's great. I can do that. And the guy said, no, he'll, he'll, he'll sort it out. No, don't worry. And I took another two steps. And then I stopped. And I thought, hey, you know what? I've gotten away scot-free here. But why do I feel so bad? And so I went back to him and said, you know, it was me. I did this. Now, why I did this was because that was my upbringing. That was how I was brought up. That's how my parents brought me up. To take responsibility when you F up. 
when you mess up, when you make a mistake, when you do something wrong, take responsibility. You know, the one thing that used to get my dad really upset was not that we messed up. It was not that we broke something or we, we, we broke a window or, we, or we, we spilled something or messed up. No, it wasn't that. It was when we denied it, when it, the evidence was clear that we did it or when we blame shifted. And this persisted right through to our adulthood also, even up till today with, with my mom. Don't, don't blame shift. Just take responsibility for what you, what you did. And so that, that was my upbringing. And that's what led me to owning up to the people at the supermarket that I messed up. What, was the, uh, what were the consequences for me? Nothing. The guy just laughed it off. He said, no, nah, don't worry, I'll, I'll sort it out. And we were gone. But if I didn't own up, it would have been on my conscience. It would have been playing on my conscience that, you know, I, I should have taken responsibility because that's how I was brought up. And I didn't. And that was bad. That, that went against the grain of who I am as a person. Now, in typical my fashion, after making this mistake and owning up to it, I started to get all philosophical about it. I started to think about, you know, I started to think about why people don't make a change in their lives. I mean, you go to a family gathering, you go to a barbecue, braai, you go to a restaurant with people, and all they do is complain, complain, and then complain some more. It's like they have a PhD in complaining, complaining about their bosses, complaining about their lives and their standards of living and how expensive things are getting and inflation and taxes and everything you can possibly imagine they complain about. But do they choose to do something about it? They do not. And when I ask them, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you start a business? Why don't you get into a different career? Why don't you upgrade yourself? Why don't you grow vertically and make a change in your life? They look at you blank, like a computer that that's memory just just crashed, you know, like you just crashed that OS because you you just loaded too much of software in it, and then they, they just look at you blank, just like that. But that's not the reason. They are not really crashing. Their software is not really crashing. The reason is that they are scared. They are scared to take that first step because it's been drummed into them that you will fail. It's been drummed into them that you do not deserve the success. And even if you take the first few steps, you will flop. And what happens if you fail? That F word, you see? They are terrified of that F word. And you know where that terror came from? From school. It came from school. You see, when we are little children, think about you or think about any toddler you know. This toddler will do whatever he or she feels like. They will walk and they will fall and they will try something. They will put something in their mouth. They will bang something on the wall. They will take up crayon and they will draw across your walls, express their inner uh, Picasso. But the one thing about them is that they are not afraid. They are far less afraid than you and I are. And then they go to school. I mentioned this in, my, in a previous episode, so I don't want to re revisit this thing in, in, in too much detail. Then they go to school, and then it's drummed into them over a 12-year period. And it said to them, if you don't toe the line, if you don't do this and that and that, if you don't do well in this and that subject, you will fail. See that word fail? You will get a big red F on your paper. And then your life will be ruined because you have failed grade R. And so you have just kicked off a domino effect, which means that you will fail grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to grade 12. You will not go to university. The almighty university will reject you. And then you will not be able to get a qualification. You will not be able to get a job. You will suffer. You will starve to death. Nobody will marry you. You will not be allowed to procreate with the human race because you failed literacy in grade one. <laughs> so people terrify you. I mean, 
It's no secret. Not to sound too harsh, but I hate the schooling system. I absolutely hate it. It's meant, it's designed to create workers for the industrial revolution. Its basis is in colonialism. It's designed to make workers out of us, not free thinkers, not what the, the modern world requires. So we are terrified. Yet, if you think about it, your whole life, your entire life, you are effing up. From the moment you were born, you started screaming your guts out. And the first thing you did was probably poo yourself. And then for the next few years, you just pooed yourself everywhere, all over the place. And then you started walking, well, crawling, and then you fell on your face, and then you got up, and then you fell, and then you got up, and then you fell, and then you started running, and then you started, you went into your terrible twos and started giving your parents grief. Look at it. One mess up after another, one F up after the other. That's what you were used to. That's the kind of person you are. And as you grow up, imagine, remember your first driving lesson, how you held that steering and you know, probably were too tense to look this way or that, and you made some mistakes, maybe left the clutch too, uh, too fast, and then the car uh, stopped, you effed up there again. But I still see you walking, I still see you running, I still see you speaking, because you couldn't say a word, and when you start, start, try to say stuff, everything wrong came out. Instead of saying mommy, you said mama, dada, you said some funny words, but you still speak, you can drive around, You've been to school, you've been to university, you can read. Can you remember the time when you started to read, when you looked at those letters and you couldn't make out anything? You messed up, messed up, messed up. But through those F-ups of yours, through that messing up, you became a better person. Because you embraced that messing up. You embraced those mistakes. And you regarded them as part of your learning journey. You regarded your mistakes as part of your learning journey as a child. And that's what enabled you to learn. So you messed up, you got up, you continued. You messed up, you got up, you continued. Now let me ask you a question. What changed? Why did you change? Where did that beautiful person, that courageous child, that inner child go? That you were, you were so brave, you tried everything. And then you became an adult and suddenly you are the most terrified. You are like Scooby-Doo. You're terrified of your own shadow. What changed in you? And more importantly, what will it take to go back? To go back to that person, to being that person, to being that person who is not cared about what people will say, who, will, who is not cared about messing up, who is not cared about trying and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing who is just focused on becoming better every day. Where is that person? And I think you need to bring that person back. And I'm going to help you today. I'm going to help you because I'm going to teach you the art of effing up. <laughs> now, you know I'd like to use a stronger word, right? But I don't... Again, my mother watches these videos. And plus, I don't want to be censored on YouTube. And, you know, I don't want to be saying some... Uh, nasty words. Okay, so let's go. How do you F up like a pro? This is how I did it. Number one, set goals for yourself. You see, as a child, mentally you had goals. Maybe they were not written down. Maybe they were not, you know, on a plaque on a wall somewhere. You didn't put it on, on uh, Microsoft OneNote, but you had certain goals, right? If you saw a cookie jar, kept somewhere where you are not supposed to reach it, that became your goal. And your mom said, don't get, don't touch this, that became your goal. And so what you did, you stood there and you figured out some way to get to that cookie jar. Maybe carry a, a, a stool, put it there, climb on top of it, climb on top of the kitchen cupboard, and then open that jar and lo and behold, treasure. So you had goals. Now, goals are what will form your North Star. It's what will guide you all along the way. Think about life, think about career, think about business as you being on that football field. You are that football player, you know, American football. And you are running with that ball. Now, if you don't know where to go, 
you're gonna you're gonna get destroyed but you get this football player who's heading towards that goal towards that touchdown and then you get somebody come and tackle him from this side and somebody tackle him from that side and he just you know winds his way and even if he gets knocked over he will pick himself up again pick up the ball and he will run until he has a touchdown you see what enabled him to do that to achieve that to accomplish that was because he knew what his goal was that goal was predetermined for him now in life we all have similar goals right we want to advance in our careers we want to advance in our businesses but you need to specify these things and you need to write them down you need to formalize them somewhere your bathroom mirror is best because that's at the place you see every morning. So that's the first thing. Set clear goals because those goals will give you the courage to get up when you make those mistakes. The second thing is normalize mistakes. Embrace mistakes. Embrace the fact that you've made a mistake, that you will make mistakes. And then in your mind, tell the whole world, deal with it. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of people and what they will say. Ah, oh, this guy failed in his business. I must have failed in what? Five businesses before I found success with IT Varsity. And then too, it's a struggle. Day by day, every day, it's a struggle. Every day we make mistakes. Every day we do things that are, that are less or suboptimal. But we get up and we continue. We get up and we continue. In life, that's how it is. So normalize mistakes, embrace them, and take them as a learning experience. Fall forward or fail forward because that means that you're not just sitting down and collapsing and waiting for the world to come and pick you up, but you're getting up and you taking that as a learning experience. So you look back, okay, what went wrong here? What went wrong? Maybe I didn't market strongly enough. Maybe I overspent in certain areas. Maybe I grew my team too fast. Get to the heart of it. You made a mistake, right, fine, get over it. Because the only time you will start progressing is when you get over that mistake and you start focusing on learning from that mistake. The next thing is to be a leader. And one of the strongest traits of any leader is to admit, I have made a mistake. Is to admit that I went wrong. Not, no, things went wrong because A, B, or C did it. Because this staff member did it, or that person, that team member didn't, or wasn't a team player. No, no, no. When a leader takes that mantle of leadership. Now I'm talking about true leadership. I'm not talking about today's so-called democratic leaders who's always blaming everybody else for everything. I'm talking about true leadership. True leadership is you take responsibility. You made a mistake, you own up. I made a mistake. And then you work towards fixing that. You work towards, you take responsibility and you work towards it. And that, what I kept, keep telling you is that that's how I was brought up. That's how my dad brought us up. My dad never blamed anybody for anything ever in his life. He took responsibility, he took charge. When there was something to be done, he was the first one there. He was always the first one there. Some construction project, he was there. Some family project, he was there. And he got criticized a lot when things went wrong, but he took it with grace. And that's what I live for. That's where I learned. So leadership is about accepting the blame. And let me tell you this. You might think, well, you know, I'm going to accept this, this mistake. My team made this mistake. I'm, going to, I'm the leader, I'm the manager, and I'm going to take responsibility for it. It's going to make me look bad. But trust me when I tell you, trust me, this is the law of the universe. It will make you look better. It will make you look better. Let me give you a scenario, right? Let's say you're the manager of a team and somebody in your team messed up and you go to your senior and you say, dude, I messed up. That person might get a bit upset and might tell you some words on the spot, but guaranteed that person will do their own, their own investigation. 
and they will ask, what really happened here? And then it will be told that you didn't mess up, your team member messed up. Imagine the respect that person will have for you. Now go back in history, go and study history. Look at all the great leaders and see when things went wrong, what they did. And I'm talking about great leaders. And like I say, not to today's leaders. They always took responsibility. And when it came time, this is taking it to the next level. When it came time to enjoy the rewards, they always pushed their team forward. And when it came time to take responsibility for the things went wrong, they always pushed their team back. That, my friends, is leadership. Okay, so be a leader. The next one is to adapt and pivot. Look, there are guys on YouTube and on Instagram and on TikTok and on LinkedIn who talk about their success in business. And their success was is described by them as being so linear. I was out of a job in 2020 and then I started doing this and two years later, three years later, I made two million rands or two million dollars a year. When somebody tells me that, when somebody shows me a linear career path or a linear business path that went from A to, to or from zero to two million or three million dollars, I know this is BS of the highest caliber because no business, no business goes like that. It's the law of the universe. It's the law of physics. As much as I would like to control these laws of the universe and make everything work exactly the way I want it to work, it just does not work like that. So when these people, these fake gurus talk to you about how they did so well and you should follow them and buy their courses, <laughs> I sell courses too. But I'm, not, I'm not claiming anything here. I'm struggling with business also, just like everyone else. You know, like so many other big businesses like Uber and Google and, and uh, Airbnb. Some of these businesses took seven years to become profitable. Seven years, eight years, 15 years sometimes to become profitable. Anyways, coming back. So when these fake gurus talk to you about how successful and how they, uh, they, they, they forged the linear path from zero to success, that is nonsense because business is all about taking a few steps, realizing you're making, uh, you made a mistake and then pivoting and then pivoting and then adapting and trying something else. It might work for a moment and then you pivot and adapt and you try something else. Now, when my investment partnership at IT Varsity ended, this was around about 2016, 2017, the first thing we did, and this I learned from my parents also, we didn't fall apart. I didn't fall apart. And I didn't go and complain to everybody about my investors who let me down or whatever. Nobody let me down. I let myself down. What did we do? We started CompuKids. We went school to school and we started teaching code, coding to kids, myself and my boys. They were tiny. Zach must have been about 12 years old. And he was teaching other 12 year olds how to code. And so we, we started that and we did well with that for a time. And then suddenly that wasn't doing so well anymore. And then we pivoted again back to IT Varsity. We went online. And since then to now, we must have pivoted at least about four or five times. And right now we are in, a, in the middle of another pivot. So it's not about falling apart and saying, well, you know, we tried something, it worked for a while and then it didn't work. And then we, we're now gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna become extinct. No, we just pivot. We admit it, okay, made a mistake, pivot. And we continue, try something different. And that's what business is all about. That's what success is all about. But this doesn't happen on its own. Remember, you will never find a solution until you admit there's been a mistake. Sadly, if you're gonna keep trying to make excuses for yourself, and you're going to keep trying to justify yourself, your learning will stop right there. And the moment you say, well, I made a mistake here, immediately the doors of learning are flung open. But when you try to justify and make excuses, the doors of learning are closed to you. So you're hurting yourself more than anyone. You're hurting yourself by not admitting your mistakes, by not embracing your mistakes. 
So go and F up and tell the world, yes, I effed up. You know, somebody invited me not long ago, a couple of years ago, to speak at a business conference about my success in business, which I don't brag about. I don't like bragging about it because it's been hard. It's been difficult. You know, somebody, uh, somebody, it was Khalid bin Walid, I think, the, the Muslim Arab general, uh, on his deathbed, he was saying to somebody that if you, if you look at my body, you can't place your, 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 your hand on any part of my body except that you will find a battle scar. Now, when I think about that, I feel that in, in my world, in business, it's a lot like that. I'm battle scarred in business. It's been tough. It's really been tough. But the rewards have been there, and that makes it worth it. Anyway, so the guy asked me to come and speak about my success in business. And I turned around and I said to him, you know what? I'd, write, I'd rather speak about my failures in business because there is a lot more to learn from my failures than from my success. Now, go and check your guru out. Go on LinkedIn, check your guru out, your fake guru. Go on YouTube and see how much they are talking about their failures. See how much they're talking about their mistakes, about their bankruptcies. If they are not talking about that, then they are fake gurus. They're just there to try and impress you somehow. So you'll never open the doors of learning until you admit you've made a mistake. Because making a mistake takes humility. And learning begins with humility. You cannot learn if you think you know everything. Simple as that. Next one. The art of effing up. You know, the one thing that I find most annoying about, especially young people, but also a lot of old people, older people my age, is that they just don't ask for help. They'll be struggling with something. And this, I find, uh, is a recurring theme with my boys. My boys are intelligent. They, are, they have been in the business with me for a long time. They know how I operate. And they see when I'm stuck. Sometimes I'll call them into my office, my juniors, and I'll ask them for advice. Or I might go to one of my mentors. But these dudes, these guys, don't ask for help at all. They'd rather sit and struggle with a problem and get depressed. Guys, I think it was Steve Jobs. Yeah, it was Steve Jobs who said, the most quoted man in the world. He said, I've never asked a person for help in my life that didn't help me. And now I will back that up. The reason I'm quoting that is because I have had the exact same experience. I have never asked somebody for help that said no. Maybe they might have said, you know what, not right now, come back, see me in a few days' time. And then they helped me. Whether it was through some words of advice or through some kind of guidance, but in some way or the other, they helped me. Now, again, asking for help, just like admitting that you effed up, takes a lot of humility. You really have to humble yourself, take your cap in your hand and go and stand in front of that person and say, look, I effed up. I tried, I effed up, please help me. If you can't do that, then you're a proud, arrogant fellow, yeah? aren't you? <laughs> Humble yourself. Business is about humility. Business is about humility. Your mistakes are yours. And your successes are your teams. It takes humility. It takes a lot of humility. It takes humility to sit in front of a client and try and sell them your product. It takes humility to go put a proposal and sit in a meeting and talk to somebody and say, this is why you should hire me. This is why you should give us the business. If you're a proud, arrogant fellow, you will never do that. You will never do that. I remember we had this project that we were doing with Microsoft at one stage. And there was a big, big, big problem, a big issue. Again, it was one of my team that messed up. 
messed up colossally. And Microsoft was upset. The representative called us up into a meeting. And I was trembling because this was a big project and Microsoft is not small fry. And I sat there and I, and I took full responsibility. I said, you know what? We messed up and I promise you that I will fix this. It was a training project. And we fixed it. We worked overnight, we worked hard and we fixed it and we called up a second meeting and they were truly impressed. And that person, that person I dealt with, when she was retiring or I think she was moving jobs, they had a farewell party, she made sure that I was present there, that I was invited, although I am small fry compared to the other guys that were there. Why? Because somewhere in her mind and in her heart there was respect for me because I took responsibility. I didn't throw my team under the bus. I didn't make excuses for my business, for my company. I said, look, we are small fry. We are nobody. We messed up. You've given us, you've put faith in us, you've given us this opportunity, and we went and effed it up. Please forgive me. We will make it right. And we made it right. Respect, guys. And then we got more business from them after that. See? And finally, finally, when it comes to your growth, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your relationships, in anything, anything you want to achieve, any endeavor that you, 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 you hold important enough that you want to do this. But what you need to do is, in order to succeed, you need to embrace a growth mindset. Now, what's a growth mindset? The growth mindset is this, that I can improve and I will improve because I deserve the success. That is a growth mindset. I deserve the success. And so I will do whatever it takes. I will take whatever steps that are needed to take. I will make whatever sacrifice that is needed to sacrifice because I am a human being and human beings are upgradable. And I will upgrade myself through learning, through practice, through effing up, through mistakes, through humility. I will continue until I find success. And I will not stop until I find success. Now that, my friends, is a growth mindset. And then you do whatever it takes to get to that point. Because you know that you deserve it. And if you don't take those steps, as in with so many people that I know, if you don't take those steps and if you don't do whatever it takes, it's simply because you don't think you deserve it. You don't think you deserve it. You want it. You go on social media, you're scrolling through Instagram and you're looking, wow, look at this fella's car, look at this fella's house. Wow, this guy's got so many followers. But you won't take the steps because you are glad for their success, but you don't think you deserve it. I know it's harsh what I'm saying. I know it's harsh. But it's also a reality. If you think, if you know from your, with every fiber of your being that you deserve something, you will do whatever it takes to get it. And if you don't, then you won't. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time.